Hello. Now, usually on my football channel, I tend to do, I get, tend to give drivers ratings out of 10. Well, tonight, I am going to rate Harry Kane's dive out of 10, and I'm going to give it four marks, 10 out of 10. It was absolutely laughable that the referee, after having watched VAR, actually gave the pen. You know, on Twitter, England get called Pen England. I've got to say, that sort of, that die perfectly sums up why England gets such a fitting nickname. Honestly, for the first 75 minutes, England were absolutely awful. Honestly, if we had lost that game, that would have been a very fitting defeat. And frankly, we stole a point tonight. I will say, you know, Saka, Sterling and Mount... Mount especially, just utterly, they just brought nothing yet again. And Mason Mount, that guy is literally the modern day Frank Lampard, you know. He does well for Chelsea, but any, every time you put an England shirt on him, he does absolutely nothing. He's just a cart horse. Every time I watch him play, he's just, you know... He's not even that good at pressing players and winning the ball off them. He just runs around, roams around like a ghost and... He offers no end product at all. And I've got to say, you know, Greenish and Bowen did far more in the 10 to 15 minutes than what the other three did for the whole match before then. God feel sorry for the Germans, you know, they kept the ball better, they passed the ball a lot better than us. And, you know, looking at the stats, it was 63% possession for Germany. Blimey, oh my goodness me. I mean, yes, I know England had eight corners and Germany had five, but frankly, no, Germany's use of the ball was so much better. You know, and I've got to say, you know, I've got to give credit to Manuel Neuer for saving Carrie Kane's shot before the penalty. You know, Greenish came on and slipped in a beautiful cross down the left-hand side. And Neuer did well to block the shot and... Klosterburn did well to block Bowen shots um, later on. But I've got to say, the Germany goal was um, honestly comical, you know. Kyle Walker charges out of defence, you know. Billy Gibbs having, having to cover over at right back. And then um, Jonas Hoffman charges in on goal. And then, you know, he, he shoots at goal. And then it takes a slight deflection, deflection of one of our defenders. Maguire is missing in action yet again. Pickford thinks the ball is, is going towards his right. But then at the last moment, he realises that actually he should actually stick his left arm out. And then, of course, the ball gets deflected off his left, left hand. And it's a goal for Germany. Um, honestly, you know, looking at other England players, I mean, Phillips was so unlucky to pick up that injury. I mean, he's had an injury hit season. He's only played about a total of seven hours of football this kind of year. <sighs> Probably should have started him, to be honest. I mean, yes, I still think Phillips is a... I still think Phillips is a... A must have starter, especially with um, Southgate as manager. But really, all I mean, I have to say, though, we're going to play Mason Mount. We, I might as, we might as well have a midfield free of Rice, Phillips, and Bellingham because Mount offers absolutely zilch. I just honestly, he's a ghost on the pitch. I have never seen what on earth, why, what justifies having him start games, other than him having a great work rate. I mean, you know, I mean, I mean, if he want, if Southgate wants players with great work rate, I mean, Jared Bowen's ability to cover balls on the pitch is pretty, pretty run out, well known for West Ham, like, I mean, you know, he, he, he you know, he's pretty good at covering ball backs when he's on the pitch. I don't know why Southgate doesn't try to start him because, oh man, I mean, all I can say is for the first 75 minutes, it almost felt like this, I know it seems a bit ridiculous, but like, 
it was like the result of what happens when you witness 11 grown men grow up without fathers in their lives. It was so, 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 so depressing and gutless. There was just no sense of authority amongst any of the players, especially when it came to keeping the ball and knowing how to use the ball and how to pass the ball around. And as for Pickford, I mean, you know, if he has another clangor against Italy, I'm, I'm going to start calling for Aaron Ramsdale to become our, our England number one goalkeeper because Pickford, some of Pickford's kicking and his positioning in front of his goal mouth was really alarming tonight. He looked very shaky. We were lucky that, well, that his main clangor of the back, well, Germany only really had about one real clear cut chance and that was literally Hoffman's chance on goal because frankly I was so annoyed with Pickford tonight and you know Maguire looked as sluggish as ever just although I have to say though it is kind of funny to look at the BBC rating stats and he actually was um actually got over a five I mean you know 5.3 for him 5.14 for Walker 5.49 for Rice, 5.31 for Carrie Kane who dived. Oh man, that really does sum up how bad everyone else was. I mean, Maguire got four, but I think that's really more for just being Harry Maguire at this point, not actually because of what exactly he did, although he was very poor tonight. And uh, yeah, we still got another two um, Nations League matches to go. Um. In other results, Finland beat Montenegro 2-0. Italy beat Hungary 2-1. Oh, yeah, and we're going to be playing Italy on Saturday night on the modern U, so good luck to England again. Got to say, I did. I was not looking forward to tonight's match, and I will not be looking forward to the match against Italy because... I, 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 honestly, I am really I'm beginning to think that it could be a realistic possibility England could get relegated from the Nations League this this season. And then, of course, Bosnia Herzegovina beat Romania 1 0. Luxembourg beat, Luxembourg beat the Faroe Islands 1 0. And Turkey thrashed Lithuania 6 0 due to the fact that. Turkey well, got relegated from League B and they're playing in League C where they're just playing absolute garbage really and well I mean they really oh, bang on favourites and bounce back into League B uh, but a team who would not be why kind of don't think will be bouncing back will be England I have to say and don't be surprised if in the next Nations League England have to play the likes of Scotland maybe Wales Possibly the Republic of Ireland because right now that just seems like almost our level. We just don't seem to have any creativity. We seem to be more comfortable just hoofing the ball at, at our forward players. It's not pretty football. It's, you know, thinking of managers who could replace Southgate, you know, I've got, you know, Graham Potter in mind, you know, does a lot of great work for Brighton and Hove Albion. Maybe. Frank Lampard, if he can improve on what he did at Everton last season. I mean, he did, you know, manage to get Champions League football for Chelsea whilst he was under a transfer ban. And, of course, he got Dorby County into the playoffs in the Championship. Having said that, though, I mean, Graham Potter would still be my favourite ahead of Frank Lampard. And maybe there's, I don't know, a couple of other English managers around. Because Gareth Southgate is an absolute cult horse as a manager. That guy is absolutely sapless. I'm so fed up with the sight of him now. I mean, you know, you look at the German team. I mean, Hansi Flick actually put an experimental lineup tonight. And his second choice team actually gave us problems, you know. Mossiola, the guy who um, chose Germany over England, will be feeling very justified in his decision because... I mean, the quality of players Germany have is just so much better. I mean, Gundogan and Kimmich were pretty good on the ball. And, you know, Klosterberg, Rudiger, and Schlosterbeck were fairly solid. Like, we had a hard time breaking that back three down tonight. Just, we didn't do much, if I'm going to be honest. I mean, the only thing Saka I can remember Saka doing was having a long-range shot and Sterling... Um, he won a couple of corners, but, you know, apart from that, he just kept giving the ball away. 
John Stones, what did John Stones do? I can't remember, I never remember what John Stone does during a football match. Trippier, well, well, I mean, we all know Kieran Trippier's only dead mostly because of his ability from corners and free kicks. And as for Carl Walker, well, he did his usual job of just sprinting up and down a pitch, coming to cover for the two cart horses, Stones and Maguire. So, um, I am going to check to see what other games um, England do have. Um, Um, and um, yeah, on um, Saturday night, yeah, we're playing Italy, and of course on Tuesday night, we will be playing at home again to Hungary. Um, and in the other Nations League games, um, I will be checking now. Of course, tomorrow Belgium will play Poland, Wales will play Holland, Ireland will play Ukraine, Scotland will play Armenia. Thursday night, Greece will play Cyprus, Kosovo versus Northern Ireland, Northern Ireland are still looking to win a game. Gibraltar will play Bulgaria, North Macedonia will play Georgia, Malta will play Estonia, Portugal will play the Czech Republic, Switzerland will play Spain. Switzerland are really struggling right now. Norway will play Switz Slovenia. Sweden will play Serbia, of course. There are four divisions in the Nations League, so, you know, I, I mean, if you want to check um, who's who's where, go on Wikipedia, because I'm not going to explain it here. Um, and, of course, on Friday night, France will be looking to redeem themselves against Austria. Denmark will be, and Croatia will face each other. Azerbaijan will play Slovakia, Belarus will play Kazakhstan, Moldova will play Latvia, Andorra will play Liechtenstein, Albania will play Israel, and of course uh, there will be, of course, at least about another three more uh, World Cup playoff uh, qualifying matches, and that is where I'm going to Wikipedia now to check who will who is playing who, because of course there's still about five teams who can still qualify. And indeed, yes, on the third, of course, um, of course, I did miss it. Um, yeah, Australia did indeed beat the UAE. I can't, obviously, not really that much of a shock, to be honest. I predicted it would be Australia. Of course, um, having played the game earlier today, I didn't see it because I don't have TV access. Of course, Australia managed to beat the United Arab Emirates 2-1 in Qatar since, of course, um, under COVID uh, the pandemic conditions, they can't play. I mean, frankly, I mean, they can't really do home and away games right now. Um, Jackson Irvine and uh, Ajin Hustik scored the two goals for... For the UAE was of course KL. UAE's Brazilian player scored the other goal, of course. And of course that means that Australia will be playing uh, Peru next Tuesday in for a place in the World Cup. Was of course their neighbours, New Zealand will be playing Costa Rica next Tuesday. No, sorry. But Australia will play Peru next Monday, I beg your pardon, whilst Costa Rica will play New Zealand next Tuesday for a place in the World Cup and you know good luck to both of them as well as Peru and Costa Rica since of course I don't support any of those nations it's gonna be a tight and tense affair and of course both games will play in Qatar due to of course the pandemic meaning that frankly it's far better just to get it done and over with one game freely and that's it thank you for watching